So I need to show you seven tests. Seven tests that you'll be subjected to, not because you are serving the devil, because you have decided to embrace the word of God, you are going to be tested. Not because you are serving Satan. I'm talking about people that have embraced the word of God. They have embraced the counsel of God for their lives. They have embraced their ordination. They have embraced their destiny. These individuals are going to go through seven tests. And the objective of the test is to certify you a precious stone. Stay with me. Are you with me? All right. So those days when we were on campus, one of our major prayer points was, Lord, anoint me. Is that, is that, is that prayer bad? Lord, do what? So that I will take your name, I'll take your presence, I'll take your power all over the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you see, the word glory in Greek, you see, sometimes we need to bring some Greek back. The word glory in Greek, most of you think glory means shining. You are, you are wrong. It's, you're, it's not okay. That you're not. Glory, the word glory is, 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 a, is, um, is a measurement for weight. For weight, you know what we call beam balance, yeah, weigh bills, weight. So glory is about weight and measures. And when the glory of God begins to rest upon your life, it is now that I've experienced a rich measure of the grace of God. I can tell you that the people the Holy Spirit used to write the Bible were men that, that knew God. Everything those men wrote under the influence of the Holy Ghost is true. And I tell you, as a both a researcher of scripture and a, a man that has experienced a little measure of the grace of God. For all of you ministers of the gospel in this place, when the anointing comes upon you, it leaves. I don't know how you how your experience is, but my experience is that it sits on me and I feel it. It's intense. I feel it like weight. So that word was used exclusively to reveal the experiential dimension of the grace of God that is in the anointing of the Spirit of God. When it sits upon you, it, 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 it is weight. So, so we were praying for the anointing. We didn't, know, we didn't know that if the anointing eventually comes, it is heavy to carry. And if your life is not adequately structured, that weight will destroy it. You would have been better off without the anointing if you were not planning to carry weight. I was building, and you know in Nigeria, you need to um, build a house. You need to create water for yourself by drilling a borehole. Then you send it to the tank and then you connect pipes to the house because the, the government won't do anything. So you need to do everything. You need, to, you need to fight. You need to drill all kinds of experiences. So uh, we, we, we drilled the borehole and, and uh, they now built a slab for the tank that will carry the water. So they called me and said, it's built. You can check. Said, no, the only way to check is not to look at the slab. Let's fill the tank with water. And when we, we filled it with water, in fact, the guy that built it was so sure he was on the slab with the tank up there. Said, I, I'm, we did something here. And before the tank got hard full, the whole structure fell down, including the man that was boasting. <laughs> the prayer point changed. The prayer point was no longer about the slab, it was about the man. We had to move him to the hospital for him, for, for the doctors to help translate our prayers into. If no weight was coming on the slab, the slab was good enough. But you see, the slab is going to carry weight. And because it's going to carry weight, there is a way it must be built to survive weight. Do you know what happened? God answered our prayer. All of us that prayed for the anointing, he answered. Whether we had weight or not, he answered. 
Just like uh, someone, the guy that built the slab, he didn't know that weight was coming. And he even stood there. He said, even plus my weight. And everything came down. We couldn't even cry out that the tank got, got damaged. We couldn't cry out again. The, our tears was about, because if the man dies, people in this city will say, ah, pastor has used somebody for sacrifice. Like this ministry will grow. I say, you, see, even if you are planning to die, you pray to die. You, you made a contract with death. You, you will not die. We ran into trouble because we were not preparing for weight. And so the anointing now came. By the time you minister under the influence, I've been, I've been to nations, me and Philip, we've been, I've been to the, some nations before. After we finished ministering and we came down, it's just that we didn't allow it. People, human beings wanted to worship us. And I'm not joking. I'm not joking. We were properly discipled. Yes, we were properly trained. We, we stayed under discipleship until we became precious stones. So we, we know what it means when God in his mercy decides to raise a man and to put the oil upon him to represent the interest of heaven. I know what it means. But if you did not develop adequate structure to carry that weight, when the people come to worship you, you say, yeah, you know, you know, I'll be you. Glory. Then you will now begin to use a baritone. Your voice will change. That's a proof that you are not built for weight. That same anointing you prayed for is going to be the object of your destruction. Even though it came from God, there was no structure to carry it. So the thing will cross the person that has invited that same oil to stay upon his life. Are you there? Oh, you are, you are not aware. You know, for about 14 years, I was without wedding ring. You, you know the, the, the story. Now, after 14 years, it was no longer safe to go without this ring. Because the moment you go somewhere and they look at you and check the hand, no ring. Huh? It's available. Are you there? Every woman wants to marry an anointed man. Hmm? If you don't have structure to carry what? Weight. You would think that you are handsome. That's why they are coming. You will not know that God has made an investment and that investment is an investment to impact the body of Christ, to impact nations. So when you speak, nations will recognize the authority in your voice and they will gather around you, not because you are a handsome man, but because you carry something that their deliverance was factored into. Are you with me? So you will see an attraction. The attraction you, 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 need to, you need to turn your face to the wall and say, Jesus, it is you they are looking for. I know it is that fragrance you put upon me that is glowing. It is you. It's actually you. They are looking. If you cannot say that, you don't have the structure that can handle the influence that the anointing. It's better for you not to be anointed. Only vessels that are tried and they have become precious can carry the things of Zion and survive. So like I said, all of us that pray for the anointing, the Lord answered. 20 years down the road, Many of us are nowhere to be found. Not because God did not answer, but because these, the, the stones were not tried. So God will not build without a stone that he has not tried. So because you receive the word of God, you want to walk by the word of God, you want to walk by faith, you want to believe God, you are expecting the hand of God to move. Just because you are in that category, you are going to be subjected to seven tests. That's what I'm saying. And all of these tests will be proof enough whether or not you believe in the word of God that you received. 
Let us begin the journey. The first test is called the test of time. Psalms 105 verse 19. Turn your Bible. The test of time. This is talking about, this psalm is talking about Joseph that was in the dungeon. And I saw you, no matter how pious you are, you don't want to be in the dungeon. This guy was in the dungeon and the Bible summarized his time in the dungeon in one verse. The Bible says, until the time that his word came. The word came in that scripture is manifested. It means that God has spoken a word to him, but the word was yet to be manifested. And until the time that his word was manifested, the word of the Lord tried him. It means that there was a time interval between the time the word was spoken and the time the word, what? Manifested. And that interval reveals a test. And that test is called the test of time. Everyone that receives a promise from God will need to survive the time test. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. All right, I will show you the technique of how to survive the time test, but I need to expansiate this time test um, much more. Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse number 1. Still talking about the time test. He said, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. So in the administrations of God, the Lord plans and features the performance of his counsel through windows of time. Yes, we know that God dwells in eternity. Yes, we know that God functions in eternity, but his purposes find expression through concise windows of time. And we cannot influence the time that the purposes of God will find expression. My friend called me one day and said he had a vision that he was wearing his white abada. For those of you that don't know, uh, what an Agbada is. It's an African garment, very bogus, very big. I know you have an idea of what I'm talking about. So he saw himself in a vision wearing that attire, that tunic, and, uh, and he was, he, there was a mighty weight of the power of God upon his life. So on Sunday morning, he reached into his uh, archives, he reached into his, his suitcases, and he, he got that apparel. You see, you cannot bring prophecy to pass by an act of the will of man. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he came in the apparel expecting that the hand of God will move. And that day the Lord left the service. The Lord was somewhere else because flesh had entered. He never knew. Mm. He took five years of dealing. Well, I will... I will tell you the story later. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 is still talking about the test of time. Habakkuk chapter 2. Habakkuk chapter 2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that there may run that... Um, Read at it. Okay, here back quick. Let's start from, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, not at the beginning, but at the end, it shall speak and not lie. It means in the day of the manifestation, the vision will be speaking. And if it is from God, it will never lie. It's exactly what God told you that is going to come to pass. But there is an appointed time allocated for the fulfillment of things that are already real in the realm of the spirit. 
The moment God says something and you take sides with God and you believe God, that thing becomes real in the realm of the spirit. And like every child, every seedling in the womb, there is a gestation period for every manifestation of the things that God has said. Is there a pregnant woman in this hall? Okay, no pregnant woman here. Oh, there is. Your delivery will be smooth in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, no matter how, how weighty, maybe she comes under the impact of the load and it's just six months, then she goes praying and say, God, in the name of Jesus, you can do all things. Can you do a miracle? This thing is heavy. Can we do something about it? You see, nothing can be done about it. Even when God visited Sarah, and God wanted to open Sarah's womb and visit her so that she could have a child, hear what God said, according to the time of life. It means that I've already invested my authority in, in ordaining a time that governs this matter. I've already invested my authority in that and I'm not about to undo it because of you. There is a principle at work already and it, it supports my authority according to the time of life. So the question is, some believers are like milk. You know what happens to milk when you subject it to time? If you open your pig milk, and then you expose it with time, it will get spoiled. But you know what? Some others are like wine. Wine gets better with time. Milk gets bad with time. So the question is, are you milk or are you wine? If you are wine, you will always get better. Hallelujah. Now, when, when I was given the Range Rover and I began to ride the Range Rover in Makoti town, one of my classmates now saw me riding. That was when he believed that I was a man of God. <laughs> he finally believed. And he believed not because he heard me preach the gospel, but he saw me driving a car. He said, Kai, if that thing you were doing produced this car, then it's the correct gospel. Is a real gospel. Hallelujah. And he now got enthusiastic and said, okay, we want to follow. He couldn't follow for two weeks. He was milk. Couldn't survive the rigor. He was admitted. But when the trials began to find expression, he, he knew that he didn't have the capacity to end up being a precious stone. Do you have the capacity to incubate not to waver in your faith when you are tested with time. Let me give you a secret on how to survive the time test. And the time test is the simplest of all the tests. I know there are ladies and guys in this auditorium, you have been waiting for the marriage Saturday. What's that song that they sing again on, on wedding days? Whenever you, you hear the choir, where you ask them a question, they say, just know that they don't know the answer. <laughs> it's a time test. When it begins to delay, then you begin to feel that God needs help. You need to do something to help God because God is impotent. God doesn't have the capacity to transform your life. God is, is weak. So I need to assist him with my wisdom. I need to assist him with my strategy. I need to do something to support him. It will become the hands of Uzzah. Because the Uzzah means strength. The strength of the flesh. You now believe that God is, is too slow, so I need to help him. The moment the hands of Uzzah comes into the equation, we'll start again from square one. Because God will not take that offering. You have already corrupted the process. If God blesses it and it comes to pass, one day you'll put your hands in the pocket and say, I supported it, you know. I, I, was, I was smart. I... No, he will not take that offering. 
it will not give him glory. So he will allow it fail because the hands of Uzzah. That's how you will know that there is a haste that is locked on your soul. A haste. A serious haste. That only trusting in God absolutely and allowing God to manifest his word in the fullness of time will defeat that haste forever. Once that haste is defeated, your believing capacity would have increased. Anytime God says, I'm coming, you will believe him. Because you stayed the time. You have become a precious woman of faith. When you, when you see believers today all across the world, there's so much compromise. People lie. People masquerade. People ah, yeah, yeah, operate in the flesh and still say in the name of Jesus and try to make it Christian. And because the average believer does, doesn't know how to design, they don't know that this man has never met God. This man does not know God. This man has never seen God. Have you heard the scripture that says that he that believeth shall not make his? Somebody sent me a message. All right? Sent me a message. And I did not re reply for two days. The person said, is anything wrong? I you know, normally what I do, I just block the person. You are not what? Block. Thank God for WhatsApp. They knew we would need to be blocking things. They were aware of it. And they built it into the app. The person that brought the idea of block, may his generations be blessed in the name of Jesus. <laughs> blocking. If you are not aware that there's block on, on WhatsApp, I'm telling you now, it's the most valuable part of the application. I went somewhere. The people were trying to prep me to prophesy. I said, no, we don't prophesy except God speaks. He said, but there's a problem already. The problem existed before I came here. <laughs> if you used to get prophesiers around that do, we have of the stock of light. Oh, Jesus sends us. You can't make me to become hasty. Because when, when I waited for him, for my word to come, I knew there was nothing I could do to impress him to make it faster. So I was willing to submit to wait for that time, that season that will carry the window of the manifestation of the word that God has spoken to me. When you find someone that is in a hurry every day, is in a hurry on Monday, is trying to mm -mm, just know that he has not met God. Move away from the person. Move away. He has not met God. Someone that will stretch the hands of Uzzah and begin to manifest in the flesh and manipulate things in the flesh so as to fulfill a word you received not because of anything but because God spoke. And you believe now that you need to be part of the process that will bring it to pass. It is when it is time for us to wait. That's when you'll know that waiting is difficult. It will take faith to wait. And many of you have taken off like a tornado already. You have started helping God. You need to repent tonight. You need to repent because you have, you have aborted that mission. The foundation stone must become the tried stone. And when he survives the test, he becomes the precious stone. And we have few precious stones that are due for the building that Jesus is building from Zion because we cannot survive the test of time. Until his word came, he waited. The word of the Lord, he tried him. Please help me pray to your neighbor. Are you like milk? Or you are like wine? Are you like milk? Or are you like wine? All right. Let me show you what to do if you need to wait. 
Let me show you how to wait. If you don't know how to wait, you will move in the flesh. I guarantee you, you fail the test of time. You lose the opportunity to become a precious stone. Are you there? Oh, you're not with me. I've had visions. I've had visions. And my visions are in a progression. I see what heaven wants to do when heaven begins to look for men. Yes, so I see it in a progression. If heaven is trying to disqualify me, I will know. I will see it. Then I will ask, what do I lack? Then they will open my eyes to something that I've neglected. Then I will, I will beg God. I will fast. I will beg. Let me show you how to wait. God will never endorse a man that doesn't pass the test of time. Many, are you with me? A young man came to me and he wanted to me, to, me to be his spiritual father. I started a church somewhere in one of the, uh, close to Abuja, you know, and he's doing something there. He wanted me to provide oversight. That's great. Then I started checking him in the spirit. Because you know, you don't accept such responsibility if you don't know the person from the Lord. Huh. I started checking him in the spirit. Then I saw that the guy began to do that ministry two years before heaven sanctioned him. That means it's the hands of Uza. God cannot bless that thing he's doing. Meanwhile, there is a semblance as though he is doing well. He has about 60 people that is preaching to every Sunday morning. Some. Then I say, okay. If, if, let me hear his message. Then I will know if he has a message. Then I listen. And I found that I, he didn't stay long enough to receive a message. So what he preaches is that he goes here, gets this one, get this one, get this one, gets this one. And then he doesn't have a message from God. That means he's not sent. Meanwhile, he took off like a tornado. And now that he has gathered 60 members, he has come to include me in the confusion. Because he can buy a microphone. He believes he's a preacher. Do you know how long I was in the cave? Oh my God. You will never know. I, f I, went, I finished Bible school in 1994. Calculate it. Somebody calculate it. What? 20 what? 29 years ago. Twenty-nine years ago. We were taught by the best teachers of those days. Twenty-nine years ago. And after doing the Bible school and I, I was coming out, I felt I had the capacity to detonate two intercontinental ballistic missiles that, that would take over two cities. Then the Lord now said, you are qualified for my school now. I said, okay, glory to God. That school took 10 years. I was already a graduate for God's sake. I said, see, you are wasting time. Let's go. So, so perishing. He said, is it my own business you want to do like this? Are you in a hurry to do? Then I realized that it was flesh. For he that believes shall not make haste. The process is designed to kill the haste that is locked on your soul on the account of the wearing of the fall. A young man married a lady. They married, he was 25, the lady was 23. They said, let them marry early. The lady died three years later. Listen to me. Another one married at 33, lady. And she lived to become 97. 
Meanwhile, the one that died when she married, we'll be looking at the one that is 30 something and say, Where's your God? May you never compare yourself with the next person on the line. I was in the cave for another 10 years. Then I got, I, I got an invitation and God allowed me to preach. And I went there, I opened the scriptures. The people marveled at the word of God. Then after I finished preaching, he said, this is just a test. Go back to the added additional five years. In these five years, I finished the Bible how many times until I knew, I knew some scriptures up heart, not because I tried to cram it. So I know the meaning of Genesis. I know the meaning of Exodus. I know the meaning of Leviticus because I studied it. When you invite me to preach, the problem is not what to say. The problem is what is God saying? If it's what to say, I can keep you here for days. My problem is what is God saying? Oh, the, the, way, the only reason why I could learn that approach was because once upon a time in the process of waiting, God destroyed the haste that was in my soul. At that point, it was no longer about me it was no longer about my agenda. It was no longer about how good a preacher I was. It was no longer about how many revelations I could access. The, I, had, I had stayed in the cave until I, I outstayed the desire to perform. What is left of me now is to be a messenger of the Spirit of Christ. When His Spirit speaks, then I speak. The reason why God will need to defeat haste is because you will say many things that God did not send you to say. Who among us is able to pass the test of time until his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. Ephesians chapter 15. Chapter 5, verse 5, verse 14. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and Christ will give thee Light. Next verse. See then that ye walked circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. So how do you walk circumspectly? You walk with caution. You know, I told you the story of a man. He was the chairman of a board of interviewers. They were interviewing young graduates to give them jobs in a certain company. And because he was a director in that company, he was the chairperson in the, the interviewing board. So the secretary of the chairman ran in and told him, your son is outside. He said, no, I don't have any son. My wife only gave birth to three ladies, three daughters. The secretary laughed. I said, I'm sure that your son is outside. I said, okay. Let him come. Who we'll interview him first? The guy came into the hall and he was the exact replica of the man. He said, who is your mother? Mentioned her name. He said, who did your mother say is your father? He said, she said, copper, copper. <laughs> I 
Now, he, he did not, when he saw the result of the way he walked, he, he denied it because he was not walking circumspectly. He came in, in contact with what he produced. He denied his product because what? He was not walking cautiously. That actions have consequences. He didn't know that theory. He said, don't walk as a fool. Walk as a wise man. Hallelujah. That pressure that came upon you to commit immorality, do you know if you ignore that pressure, you will not die? Are you aware of it? Ignore it. Oh, if, if, if a young man comes and tells you, oh my God, do you know you are beautiful? I, I believe that's not the first time you are hearing that. So you can ignore it. See then that he walk seconds back. Not as fools, never to regret your actions, but as wise. Then he then tells us how to do it. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Someone help me quickly. If your Bible is an electronic Bible like my own, click on time. If you click on time, you'll find a Greek word called kairos. K-A-I-R-O-S. You must understand that Greek language is wider in terms of capacity, it um, lends itself for deeper expression than English language. So there are four words for power in Greek language. There are two words for another in Greek language. There are, no, in my recent discovery, I found there are six words for power in Greek language. There are two words for for time in Greek language. So we have the chronos time and we have the kairos time. So when we say chronos, it is from chronos we have chronological. When we say kairos time, we mean an opportune time. A time that is tied to an opportunity. How many of you went to boarding school? When was dining time in the evening? 6 p.m. That's Kairos time. Something happens that time. If for any reason you are not in the dining hall by 6 p.m., you will have a bad story to tell. And that's why the, the Kairos, whenever the Kairos time comes, you need to redeem the opportunity that comes with the time. There's something you need to do and the reason why he says we need to redeem the kairos, he gave us the reason, is because the days, oh my God, Jesus. Hey. How many of you still remember in the book of Joel chapter 2, beginning from verse 25 to 28, God began to speak about a season of restoration. Okay, give me Joel chapter 2, 25. And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten, the canker worm and the caterpillar and the palmer worm and my great army which I send among you. Please hold on, hold on. Do you realize that these caterpillars, they don't eat grass. What do they eat? Years. Years. And you also realize that these creatures are itemized in descending order of their devouring ability. The one that devours more is the locust. So we can now tell the story of destinies. And what was it that devoured in their lives? When a locust feasts on your destiny, it takes away five years, lumps of five years. 
I, I don't have time. I don't have time. But you see, are you there? They need, the reason why we need to redeem the time is because the days are evil. There are demons that want to prey on your allotment to distract you, to apply your time, to be achieving something that is not consistent with your destiny. And that's the reason why we need to redeem the Kairos. Because what? The days are evil. I remember my friend on campus here. He fell in love. Is it, is it bad to fall in love? Please. No. We were in the heat of something. There was an action that God had staged. And God was calling us into the place of prayer. And he knew it. Very anointed. But when we begin to float in prayer, that's when that, the lady will come and, 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 and wave at him. He will abandon us in prayer and go with the lady. After six years of cutting, he went to camp, her camp, campsite during NYSE to kneel down with a flower to propose. The, the girl now said no. Now, that was a, it was a, a, a caterpillar had <laughs> feasted on his destiny. I propose standing. I don't know what happens this day. She rejected. And all his investment for six years, for which he did not master the life of prayer, was lost. A caterpillar had invaded. The reason why we will need to redeem the time is because the days. Sometimes it's... The, it's, it's is the palma worm. It's the palma worm. It's, it's a quiet worm. It doesn't eat so much per time. The one that makes you lazy to pray. So you waste. It picks up just little by little. But when you accumulate it over 10 years, you will see that a great chunk of possibility has been denied. you. Let me round up. So the Bible says that we need to redeem the Kairos. And we have said that the Kairos is the opportune time. Do you remember destiny? Huh? There are windows of time for performance. You know, that's what I said. That in the counsel of God, the wide strokes of the counsel of God, the administration of God um, fructifies events, fructifies performances consistent with windows of time. And that's why the Bible says that for every purpose, there is a time. For every purpose under heaven, there is a season. It is that season that God wants to bet purpose in your life, that your word is supposed to come, the manifestation of the things that he has told you is supposed to come, that demons will fight that window. You will need to redeem it because the days are here. Verse 17, he says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. This is how to survive the chronos season. You see, what happens is we have a long chronos season and then a little window for the kairos. Purpose is here. Are you there? Then there's another long chronos season. Then there's a little window here for the kairos. These little windows are the ones that you need to redeem. When you plant corn on your farm, it takes four months for the corn to get ripe. But harvest is just two weeks. That harvest season is what the demons will fight. They may not even fight the corn. The corn will blossom. But when they know that there's an opportune time for you, they will contend with you. If you are willing to be distracted, they will sway you away and you will miss that window. Verse 18 gives us the secret of how to spend the chronos in such a way that when the kairos comes, you'll be able to recognize it. You see, if you are waiting and you are expecting something, there is a great possibility for you to become weary and worn out because it's taking too much time for performance to find expression. 
Have you ever experienced what I'm talking about? Now, what you do is that uh, you need to know how to manage your chronos well, the chronos time. And the way to manage it, you will need to go high. But he say, don't go high with wine, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. So what we do in the chronos time, in expectation of the Kairos season where God will bring performance, is that we while away time praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Holy Ghost. When you while away time praying in the Spirit, the devil will not be able to prompt you to act in the flesh. You will be strong in the time of your waiting. You will be strong in the time of your expectation. Just like a woman that is pregnant, you know you are going to deliver. All right? It is, there are two options. It's either you surrender to the weight of the pregnancy and become a creature of pregnancy. Or you decide to become strong as you carry that load, strong in your spirit, man. You'll be able to even peep into the destiny of the child that you are carrying. He said, be not drunk with wine. You will need to go high in order for you to survive the long wait, but not with wine. You need to be filled with the Spirit again and 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 again, and again until your word comes. When you leave off a season of waiting ordained by God and you were able to survive, until your word comes. Oh, it will be easy for you to believe God. You will know something about the faithfulness of God that will make it easy for you to trust God when you hear God speak. But a lot of people in the house of God that they take off like tornadoes, they cannot subject themselves to the protocols of God's uh, um, 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 performances so they never become precious stones in the house of God. Who told you that all you came here to do is just that marriage? No, the waiting, the waiting is supposed to make you fit for what will come after the marriage is established. Do you know how long I waited? It was when God was releasing me from the cave after 15 years of waiting that he now said to me, raise a remnant for me in this generation. After 15 years of waiting, I had finished Bible school a long time. If it's the, the scriptures, they were at my fingertips. But he didn't give me the opportunity to preach anything to anybody. I was in the cave. It was in that cave that the Lord spoke about striving for the rebirth of apostolic Christianity. Please help me tell your neighbor again, are you like milk? Or you are like wine? Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Remember, he that believes don't help God. The God that has spoken to you is able to bring his word to pass. Don't help him. Did he speak to you? If he has not yet spoken, seek his face. And get him to commit himself by a promise. Our God does not lie. But men fail the test of time. And they do not have the opportunity to be named from Zion as precious stones. God will not use an ordinary stone. He doesn't use bricks. He doesn't use blocks. He used precious stones. You will become Jasper before he will build with you. You become Sardine stone before he will build with you. You become Onyx stone before he will build with you. And what determines what kind of stone you become is the process that you were subjected to that you survived. It's not in this lecture I will show you the different types of stone. Precious stones. The ones that were used to build in the new Jerusalem. And anytime you see jasper, it means the appearance of God. I will show you the meaning of each stone. 
And that's why our anointings eventually becomes different because there are some people, they just want people they have capacity to, to, to launch the effect of the presence of God. They can launch it. We we'll need to go to the book of Revelation chapter 4 for me to define Jasper. We we'll need to define onyx stone. These are the kinds of stones with different refractive indexes that God uses to build so that your life will dispense the light of God in a unique way. Can you be on your feet? We have a lot to study on this matter. We have a lot to study. Some will come in the likeness of sapphire. Some will come in the likeness of diamond. That's what they have become. That's their similitude that they sustain because of the process that they survive. Will you cave in under intense temperature? Will you cave in under intense pressure? It means you do not number among the jewels of God. He says, I will spare them as a man spared his own son that served him and thou shalt return and discern between the righteous and the wicked and between him that served God and him that served him no tonight we want to pray that we might all receive the capacity to endure as Joseph received he was in that dungeon in the very heart of the earth but there was something that kept him bubbling, kept him alive. There were visions he had seen about his glory and he knew that the power of the dungeon was not sufficient to undo the visions that he saw. Oh, so you might be in the dungeon now. Do not lose sight of what the Lord has shown you in the secret place. Somebody needs to cry to him and say, Lord, I believe. Help my own belief. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I'm not milk. I am wine. I am wine. Time will only reveal how better I am. The process will only reveal how strong I am. I am determined to come out a precious stone. Brilliant like diamond. Brilliant like onyx. It is black. Onyx is black but it shines. It glows in its blackness. He will build with precious stones. Stones that are dry in the furnace of affliction, stones that are tried in the fires of tribulation, stones that are tried. 